Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the Center for Asian American Media celebration of Asian American storytelling. My name is Tamlin Tamira, and I'm kind of verklempt because I'm so honored to be your MC this evening, even though we are separated and apart, we are still managing to be together in order to celebrate this incredible occasion. Because this year marks 40, one, two, three, four, 40 years, the Ruby years of CAM supporting, producing, and presenting Asian American and Pacific Islander stories that move us, that inspire us, and give voices to the diverse experiences of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders everywhere. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, each and every one of you for joining us virtually, even though it may be, as we celebrate, as we party, as we cajole our progress, and that we continue to fight the good and fair fight and move forward together. Thank you so, so very much for being here with us tonight. I'm here because I, and I know all of you believe that representation in media matters. And CAM ensures that real and nuanced representations of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders are seen and heard on screen. I support CAM when it was known as NATA, when I was a little young girl, because we're celebrating 40 years here at CAM, uh, but NATA was its predecessor. And um, if we don't tell our stories, we won't be seen. We'll continue to be invisibilized and we can't change our culture. We can't change what it be, what it's meant to be American, what it means to change our policy so that our government, that our culture, that our neighbors, that our cities, that our counties, that our states all can embrace our faces as Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders as true full-blooded, red-blooded Americans. This is why Cam and Nata and, and storytelling from these wonderful filmmakers, documentarians and short, sto uh, short, uh, short story filmmakers are so important because they represent us. They are telling us, they are telling <clears throat> the whole of America how we think, how we feel, what we want, what we believe in, and what really binds us together because our values are all the same across the spectrum. This is what storytelling, this is what the power of storytelling is. So I embrace all these wonderful filmmakers that are underneath the umbrella, the parental umbrella of what it means to be um, uh, fostered by the Center for Asian American Media. So thank you so very much for being with us and celebrating 40 years of storytelling. Now, I want you all, if you can, to enjoy and, 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 and take a leap into what it means to be technologically proficient. And if you would like to, please share with us why you support CAM in the chat box right to your right. You can tap away on your computers or on your phone if you have the good eyesight and, and chat and chat away as to why you celebrate CAM, why you consider making a donation to this wonderful and important organization. The work that CAM does is so incredibly important and um, it employs actors like me, um, but it is, and it is a significant part of what it means to be um, a part of this a part of this country as known as America. But it is also a difficult, sometimes overwhelming undertaking because it's a significant. It is an organization that relies on donations, on monies, on funds because and and the generosity of you, the generosity of what it means to you to have stories that touch your hearts, that that invigorate your minds, that inspire, that that that, make you want to tell the stories to your children, to your nieces and nephews, to your grandchildren, and to your neighbors everywhere. This is the reason why we're asking you to put in the chat box if you if you have that ability and that desire to just to learn is in, so we can learn about each other as to why it's important to celebrate and, and support CAM. Please donate at caamedia.org or CAA CAM Media. So CAA Media dot org slash donate. One more time. CAA Media dot org slash donate. And your donation will be matched. 
all proceeds for this fundraiser will support CAM's critical and important and inciting work in supporting filmmakers and amplifying Asian American and Pacific Islander stories. While we share <clears throat> some special moments with you tonight of looking back over the course of 40 years over this evening, our special guests will speak to you about the power of sharing our community stories and underscore the importance of storytelling of storytelling, to catalyze change, to build a more robust and a just future. We have such an exciting lineup tonight. We got to rehearse a little bit yesterday. So let's all get started together. We will begin with a short video highlighting Cam's key moments from this past year, followed by remarks from Cam's executive director and your friend, Stephen Gong. You know, if what you're trying to do is to do something that will move people, then try and move yourself first. We can change this. We don't want normal. We're going to create a new normal that is better, a better normal. Representation certainly matters in all facets of life, private and public. We appreciate very much your time today. And we're going to continue. By the way, this isn't the end of the person. This is just the beginning. So thank you very much. and welcome. Thank you, Tamlin. That was an incredible introduction. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to match your energy. You know, after all, I'm stuck here in my bedroom where I've been for seven months, and uh, but we're not going to let any of that stop us, right? Thank you all for joining us for this special program in which we celebrate 40 years of work at CAM to support, share, and create Asian American media. I know that many of you have been longstanding friends and supporters of CAM, and I hope that we can spark some fond memories tonight. I also know that many of you are just getting to know us, and together it is our hope to draw strength from the past in order to move our communities and the nation forward through the art and act of telling our stories through media. The group that founded CAM, known in the early years, as we've heard, as NATA, shared two foundational beliefs. First, for those who were makers, it was a love of the medium of the moving image and the desire to be part of it. Secondly, but just as important, was a recognition of the absence of authentic Asian American stories in film and television of the day and an understanding of how limiting and damaging this absence is. Over the years, CAM has developed several programs of support for filmmakers, primarily in public television, and through the largest Asian American film festival in the country. Educational distribution to schools and libraries, talent development, and as we've just seen, virtual screenings and town halls. With CAM's help, hundreds of films have been supported and shared to millions of viewers. So I'd like to ask you, to join me in raising a glass of good cheer and appreciation. This is my soju cocktail. 
To CAM's founders, and most especially to the memory of Lonnie Ding, Jim Yi, and Janice Sakamoto, and to the ongoing legacy of their vision and dedication. Cheers. Very nice. This has been a, a year of years of disasters, both man-made and natural, from the pandemic to anti-Asian hate, racial reckoning and the cynical assaults on the foundations of democracy, science, and the constitution. There is light ahead, but there is still so much more work ahead to repair the damage to our nation and to our humanity. I believe that storytelling, and I know all of my colleagues believe that storytelling and the impulse to connect with one another, to form community, to gain a larger sense of purpose, has never mattered more. And we at CAM are resolved and excited with your help and support to undertake this challenge. So I'd like to take finally a moment to give special thanks to all of you again for your generous support toward our CAM Forward campaign. Thank you for making our work possible. And thank you to CAM's staff and board for all of their hard work in realizing this event. And so now I'd like you to uh, sit back and enjoy our next segment. It's a compilation of early Asian American film edited by former CAM board member and good friend, Walt Louie. And it's presented as a mystery. This mystery is appropriately Chinese. What's not there seemed to have just as much meaning as what is there. Nothing is what it seems to be. I guess I'm not Chinese enough. I can't accept a mystery without a solution. And it's more like a cartoon character of Asian woman. Good or bad, you know, uh, mostly bad. He said the women should uh, just remain in the home and in the bedroom. We've been married for 13 years. Neither of us had ever felt a racial barrier and now society was trying to create one. It seemed like a foul, musty thing. I knew that I had to ask myself, what, you know, what is a memorial's purpose? Especially what is a memorial's purpose in the 20th century? Sometimes I wish that, I wish that, why can't we have a normal family? You know, I never seen my father before. So I say to myself, what about me? I'm your brother. I ain't that family that important. The fact that they're hurting people, that they just hurt Emil de Guzman, chairperson of the IHTA, they're going to be attempting to remove the senior citizens who are now in their rooms with medics. It's the last stop of the low-income housing struggle here at the International Hotel. I'm a Sikh and I'm proud of it. And if I had my chance to do it all over again, I'd, I'd wish to be a Sikh. Just because you hang out with white boys, you think you're the shit, am I right? The rhyme is like Kentucky Fried Chicken, so get with me, huh, I'm finger licking. I bet you never thought about a lover that's Asian, getting cozy with the yellow persuasion. You know, they were serving, Forbidden City used to serve a dinner for a dollar and a half, right? Dollar. For a dollar. Saturday dollar and a half. Saturday dollar and a half. For dinner. I can remember swearing when I was young that I would not change, because if I changed, I would betrayed the revolution. And as I've grown older, I've understood that I should change. And, and changing was really more honorable than not changing. The only way that I can actually be closer to my Korean mother is to finally admit that she's not my mother really anymore. I always believe that music so important you know it's so healing and you know you come across an experience like sendai you know they still have no home they have to somehow still support their family you know for me i'm i'm on the next plane to hawaii and going home that experience was a huge reminder to not take things for granted so why do you need us to assemble the awesome asian bad guys does he look familiar Aaron Takahashi, the commercial actor? Seriously? You know him and not me? Aaron is a member of the most ruthless Asian gang, the Wang Chung, spreading filth, crime, and STDs all over Los Angeles. And he's also my sister's killer. My twin sister, Pamlin. 
You got it? Right? Yeah, that's, that stuff's too deep for me, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. Uh, you and your Chinatown <laughs> street culture, you got it. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dan Young, Director of Programs for CAM. Tonight, it's my great privilege to host a short conversation with Helen Zia. I first became, of Hel first became aware of Helen through the landmark documentary, Who Killed Vincent Chin? by Christine Choi and Renee Tajima Pena. That film and the journey for justice it documented inspired me to pursue filmmaking. I wouldn't be here today doing what I do had it not been for Helen and the, other, and the battles of others like her. Helen is a longtime friend of CAM and one of the guiding lights of our community. Helen relentlessly unearths the past, but always with an eye towards shaping a better future. What strikes me most is how she always seems to be ahead of the times, embracing intersectionality, fighting for Asian American and LGBTQ civil rights, and always seeking to have, always seeking to leave the world a better place than the one she came into. If Cam were a person, We'd aspire to be Helen, passionate, thoughtful, and someone who just gets cooler with age. It's my pleasure to welcome Helen Zia. Hi, Helen. Thank you Hi, again Don. for joining us today. Hi, Don. Thank you for that, that beautiful introduction. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, so it's great to be here with you tonight. I wish we could do this in person. But, uh, you know, we couldn't think of a better person to speak with tonight. So my first question to you is around storytelling. Emotional stories and personal journeys have always been fundamental elements for activism and social change. Can you please spot, talk about the power of story and activism and where do you see Cam's role accordingly? Well, you know, before you can even think about activism, you have to see yourself in the society, in the world, in the world that you might end up wanting to change. And the problem is for Asian American and Pacific Islanders, you know, children, um, we don't really see ourselves uh, very much. Cam has mm. changed that. But I have to say, when I was a child in the olden days, you know, we, we grow up with these stories, right? Hero stories. Um, mm. You know, the Iliad and the Odyssey, the long journey and the hero comes home having conquered lands and where are the Asian American Pacific Islander hero stories? You know, mm -hmm. the, the notion that um, some kid can chop down a cherry tree and become president one day. Well, those kids, those heroes never look like the people of our communities. So um, part of it is to make ourselves visible. We know we're there. We know we have heroes. We know we have um, the good, bad, and the ugly. And we just don't see that. So for, to me, it's um, very much a, a concern of my heart that children, AAPI children should be able to see themselves and imagine themselves in this world where they can make a difference. And I think that's where Cam comes in. I, I think Cam has, has done that in so many ways um, from when I was a kid and we were completely invisible and the only thing is that, you know, change has been really glacial. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, we were literally invisible, except when I was a kid and much more beyond that to only be the enemy, you know, the, 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 the goop, the geek or the geisha, if you were female. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so those are things that have to be changed. And even just, even being visible is part of, of activism, I think, for our communities. Um, you look today and how much change there's already um, been, thanks to CAM and, and Asian American Pacific Islander filmmakers, storytellers, who have you know, sort of um, tried to break through all those barriers and, and, and get our stories out there. Even so, even today, where topics like immigration or um, refugees and being detained or deported when you see that stuff in the news asian americans aren't in there at all when right. actually our communities are, have the highest proportion of immigrants than any other community or um how the detentions and separations and so forth have affected our communities it's just you know 
were still invisible on so many levels. And even mm -hmm. today with the pandemic and how how our Asian American communities are, you know, suffering from the racism that's being directed toward us being blamed for this pandemic. Um, the stories still have to, it, there's a fight to get those stories on. So mm -hmm. that's the core of, of where the activism comes from. In order to see yourself as being a change agent, as somebody mm -hmm. able to, to make these changes, it's, it's got to, um, it has to be in the imagination first. We have to be able to see ourselves as the, as the hero, as the heroine, as mm -hmm. the people who are capable of really um, changing society. And the thing about it is our communities are doing that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the uh, uh, polling information that I've seen so far says that, you know, um, the AAPI communities had a, more than a 30% jump in engagement in mm -hmm. this recent election in trying to make a change in this society. And mm -hmm. every one of those is a story. And so, yeah. you know, it's it's really um, that important role that CAM plays to tell those stories, to put in the minds, not only of Asian American or Pacific Islander kids, for all kids, for all mm -hmm. people to see us as part of this society, you know, who can uh, run for Congress, run for president, be, mm -hmm. um, you know, on the Supreme Court to make mm -hmm. changes in our community. So, so that's, um, to me, the connection between right. what CAM does and mm -hmm. activism. Thank you for that. So let's get to this year in 2020, you know, certainly for CAM, we entered into this year, you know, thinking that we would be able to celebrate our community's history, the organization being around for 40 years. And 2020 has been just, you know, um, moment after moment of unexpected turmoil and challenges, right? But yet, in some ways, it's been a certain kind of coming of, coming of age for Asian Americans, right? I think with, with such turmoil and anger and challenges can come opportunity to create a new narrative, right? So, you know, uh, this moment, certainly on a personal level, has been really catalyzing, uh, clarifying, and, and in some ways, given all of the unrest, I feel like there's more opportunity to make change and, op and optimism to really challenge power structures and make the world, you know, a better place. You know, it, it feels, you know, historically that this is going to be for many of us the most important year of our lives. You know, when I look at history, it harkens back to 1968, you know, a time of incredible anger, turmoil, but communities can really make change, right? I think 2020, I hope we'll all look back at as a, at a moment of when we all banded together for transformational change. How, how are you feeling? How, how are you thinking? What are you feeling about 2020 specifically? Like, how do you feel about this year and, and what, what, what effect it will have on our community? Well, I, I think your reference to uh, historical times past, not that long past, but the mm -hmm. 1960s, for example, 1968, when the term Asian American was first created, that was a time, um, you know, people kind of today look back in olden days as, with a little bit of nostalgia, but the 1960s mm -hmm. were an incredibly tumultuous time. I mean, 1968, Asian Americans, especially, you know, in the Bay Area came together with the third world strike and the term Asian American was created because we only existed as as um, separate ethnic groups um, mm -hmm. and and enemy ethnic groups. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And but not realizing that, hey, 1968, um, Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. Our, um, Robert Kennedy was assassinated. There were so many, there was street violence. There were so many mm. killings. People were on the streets knowing that they could be shot and killed by the National Guard and things like that. And so th these were incredible times, but out of it came lots of movements. I mean, um, you know, there was the third world strike movement that led to Asian Americans coming together as a national force, you know, first among students. There were other things, the anti-war movement that brought attention to, you know, um, from the activist side, what lives were like for the 
uh, people of Southeast Asia, of Vietnam mm -hmm. and Cambodia, and connecting with those, or the women's liberation movement, or Stonewall for the, the launching of the gay liberation movement. I mean, all of these things out of the turmoil came incredible change and progress mm -hmm. and people who were very motivated to say, mm -hmm. okay, how do we end racism? So mm -hmm. that was when I was young and we were talking then about let's end racism, let's end mm -hmm. war, let's have equality. Well, fast forward to today, we're talking about that too. And yes, there have been um, progress. I mean, the activists of that day, of, of the 60s, actually created incredible institutions in our community. I mean, CAM right. is part of that heritage. And mm -hmm. so for today, I those were youth movements. That's also important. These were global movements of change. And today, those same conversations, learning the lessons of those days are being had. People are talking about what is how do we change systemic racism? How do we how do we change criminal justice and you know the Black Lives Matter movement for Asian Americans? How do we support that and fight anti-Asian racism that's going on? And so mm -hmm. there's a lot of I think very intense conversations going on, a lot of movements going on, on mm -hmm. that are largely invisible except to ourselves but where community activists, especially the, the youth of the Asian American Pacific Islander communities are talking about to their older generations, okay, mm -hmm. this is what we have to do to stand with Black Lives Matter, to make systemic change for Asian Americans and end racism toward us. These are things we have to do. And mm -hmm. so that gives me hope. And the idea that CAM can also capture those struggles and share them, you know, among all communities to see how Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders are playing a role in these struggles. Um, that all makes change. And it gives me hope that people are talking about not just today, change for today, but for tomorrow and way in the future of tomorrow, because we have to have a vision. We have to have a vision that we can have a world where people can be seen for their full humanity. And I mm -hmm. think that's what yeah. CAM does. It's all about bringing our full selves in, not just the race or the gender or sexual orientation or any mm -hmm. one of those things, but that we can be a full human being and yeah. be in a world where everybody is seen for their full humanity. That's great. So I would love to keep the conversation going, uh, but we're, uh, I think, running out of time. I really want to echo your point, Helen, that similar to the 60s, I know myself and we at CAMP are really taking the lead from the younger generations. And I think that is what uh, will be sort of a stunning opportunity to help, to, to work with, with, the, with, with the future generations to, to, to leverage what, what access we have to build something significantly better than what we see now. So Helen, thank you very much for your time. Um, and on behalf of Cam, thank you for coming out today, but more importantly, thank you for all that you give to the community. Well, thank you to Cam for all that you do for the world. Yeah. Thank you, Kellen. We'll see you soon. So next up is a short video message from Leah Salonga, who we're proud to have worked with on a fabulous upcoming PBS concert special, which will pre premiere next week on great performances. Hi to all my friends at CAM. It's Leah Salonga here wishing you all a very happy 40th anniversary. This is a huge milestone and you should all be very proud of the work you've done over these past four decades. I'm so grateful to CAM for partnering with me on my concert special from the Sydney Opera House. Collaborating with your hardworking and dedicated team was truly a joy. And together we created something that we can all be proud of and that I know audiences will enjoy. CAM works tirelessly to uplift Asian American talent and their stories, building a community around shared narratives and experiences. This is why it's so important to support CAM and all of the great work that they do today and for the next 40 years. Congrats again to the entire CAMLY and happy anniversary.
Kamali. That's brilliant. Maraming salamat po, Leah, for your kind words and for reminding us the important work of Cam and all the people and the staff and what they do for all of us in bringing out stories and magnificent performances like yours, which will premiere on PBS on November 27th. Um, it is a Cam co-production with Leah and um, it is the last, it is the finale closing performance for the fall schedule of PBS's Great, uh, Great Performances series. So watch the concert film on your PBS stations um, on Thanksgiving weekend, uh, November 27th at 8 o'clock p.m., 8 p.m. Central. So thank you again, Lea Salonga. Um, right now, everyone, it's I have an update for all of you all on CAM's Forward campaign. Uh, so far, CAM has raised $114,000, just $11,000 away from its goal this year of raising $125,000. So if y'all have a little room in your uh, wallets to give to CAM, please help us come together to help CAM reach and hopefully exceed its goal for 2020. Please donate now at caamedia.org org slash donate and thank you now we're going to move on to our next segment and i am so thrilled to introduce to you because i know of her work uh she is a singer songwriter musician producer and leader of the indie outfit tao and the get down stay down here to uh here to uh sing a very very special version of her latest record temple i bring to you tao nguyen Hi, I'm Tao Nguyen, and I'm so glad and grateful to be here to help CAM celebrate its 40th anniversary. Um, thank you, CAM, so much for your singular leadership and the illumination of and capture and encouragement of Asian American stories and voices, mine included. I'm so grateful to you for helping me tap into and share the pride and awe I feel for the people I come from. So thank you so much and here's to 40 more and 40 more after that.
Why would a million dare sink in the sea? Why would a million dare sink in the sea? Why would a million dare sink in the sea? Why would a million dare sink in the sea? I don't want to say anymore, but I have been here before. Say anymore. Find what you need. I don't want to say anymore, but I have been here before. I have earned this sorrow mine to keep. Wow, thank you so very much, Tao Nguyen, for a searingly beautiful and heartfelt performance. Oh, my God. Um, everybody, did you know that Tao is a subject of the Cam Bondage short documentary, Nobody Dies? This film follows Tao and her mom as they visit Vietnam for the first time, Tao's first time, and her mother for the first time since the Vietnam War. It kind of echoes my own story when I went to Okinawa for the first time and my mom when she went back to Okinawa since the war. Um, these stories are pertinent. These are personal. These are important. These are touching. And um, you wouldn't believe how common it is across the American spectrum. So uh, again, this is a reason why uh, uh, to celebrate CAM in order to celebrate and support those filmmakers who are going to bring those stories to us. In addition to CAM Fest and its work in public media, CAM has a extremely long history of supporting uh, exciting emerging filmmakers through fellowships and grants. And the film that Tao Nguyen is in is featured is one is only one example of that. This necessary work is only made possible with support from people like you. Please consider joining the Camily, joining the CAM family. Um, and uh, 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 fill out the membership form at caammedia.org slash membership. Uh, so please consider donating to CAM and um, help them, help us uh, tell our stories to nurture our next generation of storytellers and filmmakers to rise to new heights. Please visit CAM's website to make a contribution. And as part of CAM's milestone year, 40, 40, 40, the organization's launched its CAM 40 Storyteller Series that spotlights influential creatives who are shaping the narratives of today and tomorrow. And in this next video, you will hear from some of them in their own words about their future, about our future in Asian American storytelling and their hopes for a more equitable, future in media. The future of Asian American uh, storytelling for me is really interesting. I really want to see more intersection and more diversity. An exciting thing that's been going on is we're breaking through all these barriers in representation and we can get more deeply personal because it's not just about being the first X, Y, or Z anymore. Where we are seen not just as Asian American artists or female artists, but as artists who don't need a descriptor of our cultural background in order for our work to be legible to others. I think that we're uh, finally at the place where our stories are being told being told and they're being told authentically. I see the consumption, uh, the enjoyment and the appreciation of Asian American storytelling is only gonna grow. 
more equitable future really means uh, a lot more diversity within. So I really want to see more diversity behind the scenes. I feel like we're getting more diversity in front of the camera, but I feel like it'll just make things richer if we see more people like us. Cultural equity is not just a, a conversation that is sort of a trend. It's really um, looking at the value of, of all our experiences. Ultimately, what we all want is the ability to have people like us, who look like us, who come from our cultures. Most important to me is in order for the stories shown on screen to meaningfully represent our lived experiences, we as a community need to be behind the camera. My hope for the next generation of Asian American storytellers, that the voices become multiplied and speak with more volume. I'm really hoping that, you know, basically the next generation will be those storytellers. For the next generation of Asian American storytellers is for them to go deeper into whatever paths they want to go into. That more of us can spend less time educating others and can instead put our creative energy into the visioning of new forms of storytelling. This younger generation is just more gutsy and more ballsy and is just not afraid to talk about certain topics. I support Cam. 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 I support Cam because they really nurture and develop a new generation. Because I would not be where I am today as an artist and a filmmaker. And I support Cam because they support me and they support other creators that I love. Hi everyone, you just heard from some of our CAM storytellers and um, their hopes and dreams for the future of Asian American storytelling. Now we're so excited to deepen that discussion with three very prominent A Asian American filmmakers. Uh, but more than that, they are our dear friends and collaborators. Um, before we bring them on, I'd like to introduce my co-host, the festival and exhibitions director at CAM, Masashi Nawano. Masashi is truly the face of Cam, I would say. Oh. He is a fashion icon that we all admire, <laughs> as you can see. Um, <laughs> we may, you may know that Masashi has a very special love for horror films, but you might not know that he has this phenomenal culinary ability as well, which I'm really missing right now because we would otherwise be enjoying a lot of his treats. Masashi? Um, hi everyone, I am so thrilled to be here. I would like to introduce my co-host, Sapna Sakya, CAM's Talent Development and Special Projects Manager. Nice bow tie, Sapna, I see that. I think she okay. uh, might have stolen my look, but that's okay, because I think you're pulling off. I think you look better than me tonight. Um, you know, since I've been at CAM, I've had the privilege of working next to Sapna and as Sapna mentioned, we travel to a lot of festivals together. That's where I make said good food. Um, but um, I, no matter where we go, um, I'm forever impressed by Sapna's passion, her professionalism, her eagerness Aww. to work with our emerging uh, storytellers. So I am so great, to, uh, excited to be here with you to uh, co-host this panel. Um, so I get the honor of introducing our three special guests. Uh, first off, please help us welcome the talented filmmaker of recent Netflix hit film, The Half of It, and iconic feature saving face, uh, Alice Wu. Welcome, Alice. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm actually beaming in from a quarantine hotel in Taipei, and I wouldn't miss this because uh, Cam has been such a huge, uh, it's actually been a huge part of my getting to be a filmmaker. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Next up, we have another local cinematic superstar, director of films including Fruit Fly, I Am a Ghost, and Bitter Melon, and truly my favorite creative person to work on projects with, H.P. Mendoza. Welcome, H.P. Hi, thanks for having Hi. me, guys. This is great. I'm uh, chiming in from Manhattan, so uh, I, things might be a little darker here than you'd expect, but Alice, I think you've kind of got me beat as, as far as like, proximity to Cam. <laughs> 
Great. All right. Uh, last but not least, a filmmaker, Sundance Institute's Director of Outreach and Inclusion, and an amazing and vital friend to Cam, Kareem Ahmad. Hi, Kareem. Hi, all. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here with you. Hey, thank you so much for taking the time to join us, all of you. Um, we're almost at the end of 2020. <laughs> And wow, it's it's been a pretty stressful year. Um, but you know, in spite of all of the challenges that 2020 has brought, um, you know, I can say for me and everyone at CAM, it's been so meaningful for us, meaningful for us, that we've been able to work with all of you this year. Um, so I'd like to start with a question for all of you, um, and um, I wanted to ask you what you thought this moment. I mean, what does this moment mean to you? Um, and in the context of, you know, community, why do you think community and storytelling are so important now in this time more than ever? Um, I'd like to start with Kareem, if that's okay, and then <laughs> we can go sure. down the left. I didn't um, mean to call on you. I mean, though. that's a big question to start with, Sapna, but um, <laughs> but I'll I'll do my best. I mean. You know, I, I hesitate to sort of name this as a moment because I feel like mm -hmm. we are living in the confluence and sort of coalescence of like so many millions of moments that have come to where we are right now, right? And like there are ways that, you know, and I don't have to tell anybody in this room, right? We're all living in this experience and everybody who's like, you know, all the CAM constituents that are watching online, it's like we're the ones that have been living through everything that this pandemic has laid bare, right? I have a really close friend, um, you know, who's also an artist and he likes to sort of call this period of the pandemic as like the light of Corona because there are ways that like Corona like shines its light on like aspects of society that have been deeply unjust and deeply violent and deeply deleterious to all of our communities for so long. And it's it's only in sort of this moment where we're all quarantined and locked in in various stages do, you know, folks from dominant cultures really sort of recognize, you know, the, the things that we've been living with and struggling with for so, so many years and so many others like us, right? Like all the folks within our BIPOC communities are so disproportionately impacted by everything that we're seeing right now. And so, you know, th this moment is really sort of you know, it's an inflection point is the way that I sort of look at it. And like the work that I do at Sundance, the work that I do as an artist and a writer and a cultural strategist and the work that I do within the Guild of Future Architects, like it's it's all around looking at this current moment as an inflection point that is really about our survival, right? And how do we look at this current moment and figure out, you know, in the same way that decisions were made decades ago in the past that have allowed us to be where we are right now. How do we, you know, make a decision in this moment as a society, as a culture, as communities, and as movements to be able to say 10, 20, 100 years from now, we're going to arrive at a more just and beautiful society for all of our constituents because of the decisions that we make right now. Because we say, like, we're not trying to get back to normal. We're not trying to, you know, like survive through the current normal as our new means of subsistence we're going to use this moment to really progress into the future and say like no we want to we want to move beyond like settling for survival and move into thrival and really say like how do we build our structures in a way that are going to be more just and beautiful so that we can progress out of this thing and say like look like we're going to make sure this never happens again and like Organizations like CAM, organizations and artists that are supported by CAM, organizations like Sundance and the, the work that we all do together as like allied organizations, like that is so critical and at the center of this, right? Because like CAM is a driver of culture, right? Like CAM creates and defines culture in terms of the way that our communities are telling their stories, the way that those, those stories are, are being enabled to find and develop and expand an audience, right? And like that is what defines culture, which defines society. And so like, you know, we've had some victories in the last few weeks, right? And like, you know, the 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 the, the jury's still out on like whether or not like this lazy, this lazy half-ass coup is actually gonna happen or not. But like, the, regardless of, you know, whether or not we're able to actually like inaugurate the person who was just elected, like we've got a lot of rebuilding to do. And a lot of that is based on like giving the reins and giving the spotlight to artists that are being able to drive culture in a way that is going to be more beautiful, that is going to allow for us to be able to tell our stories and to be able to um, to build the, the society that we all really dream of, where we can all thrive. 
That's great. Wow. I love it. The light of Corona. May it shine on us. I can't take credit for that, but I'll, I'll put it. <laughs> To thrive. Um, what about uh, you guys, HP or Alice, whoever wants to go first? No, I don't want to call on anyone. I, I, I'm really glad you started with Kareem because that answer is really amazing. And yeah, I was that was actually really moved. Um, and I, I guess I would just say, especially like what he talked about is like, like what I, one of the things is that it's not just this moment, but I think it's always a continuing series of moments, right? Like on the one hand, I was just watching, it was like incredible to watch that thing where Honestly, it was like filmmakers who are half my age and the thing that you just shown talking about the next generation of filmmakers from them is like a fascinating thing for me to hear. And it reminds me that like, you know, I, when I was really young, like watching Wayne Wong's Chan is Missing, right? In a theater. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing is any time for any kid, like at any point in history, the first time they get to see an Asian American face on screen or, and especially if it's in a theater where there might be white people in the audience, like the first time that happens, is going to be their moment and that's mm -hmm. going to continue to happen like it's happened all through history and it will continue to happen in the future which is why you know to me it's so important to have organizations like cam like you know kareem's like what kareem's work at sundance and, and etc is that like i guess we're always just trying to create opportunities for those moments that's great thank you and hp Oh, well, I, I like Kareem hesitate to call it a moment, but for different reasons, because at this moment, I, at this moment, I don't even know what a moment is like Corona has made everything a damn era, right? Like every, like I can't, I don't, what is time? What is now? Um, but I think if you had asked me this a couple of weeks ago, I would have probably spoken to things at large. I would have spoken for um, like the landscape of things and where Asian America sits in the, in the political spectrum. But Right now, post November seventh, mm -hmm. I'm in a very different place. I used to be cautiously, cautiously optimistic, and now I am just plain old optimistic. Even though I am worried about what all those super uh, Calvinist proud boys are doing, and I'm actually watching a lot more Fox News than normal, but that's okay. This is me being cautious. Um, but what I what I will say is this moment for me on a very very personal level. Um, I feel like all of a sudden we've kind of restored empathy, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that we're fixed, right? But it was very nice, very nice. Why am I doing this? That's so ugly. What? That's like very like Trumpy. What? There, it was very nice to see someone get in front of a microphone and speak to all of America. You know, for someone to actually talk about how he wants to uh, erase what he referred to as a uh, what is it? Grim, a grim era of demonization, right? Mm -hmm. He said he doesn't want to speak to red states and blue states. He wants to speak to the United States. And I feel like over the past four years. Um, just e even with, with, within people in my own circles, whether it be my queer circles or uh, POC circles or specifically Asian American circles or even more specifically Filipino circles, if there was anything I said that sounded remotely like I was reaching across the aisle, I was demonized, you know? And it, it was almost like, okay, we're not, mm -hmm. we're not allowed to actually show a little bit of empathy because we're all in this place of anger. And I totally get it, of course, right? Like, I'm like, like I think all of us here, we all, in, we, within each of us, we, we fit and we, we are made of Venn diagrams of like, we intersect, right? Like we, we, all, we are all parts of like numerous, marginalized communities so i get the outrage right but i do feel like wow after november 7th i'm allowed to feel kind again and that's what this moment means to me that's great um kareem i wanted to follow up with you um as you mentioned you know you are this amazing creator um and we work with you now in relation at times with sundance and i should inform our audiences that we have been a proud Sundance affiliate partner for a few years now. And Kareem has been so instrumental in all of the amazing things we do and the filmmakers that we get to meet there. Um, aside from Cam, you work with a lot of amazing, other amazing organizations who are mission driven and serve unique communities. So, you know, you've you know, you, uh, started this earlier, but how do you see us all working together and to envision a more equitable kind of future for all of our storytellers? I mean, you know, I've I've been steeped in this space myself just for the last, I mean, I mean, for the pandemic, but also like, you know, before that, really sort of thinking about thinking about the way that artists and those that support artists manifest values through the work that they're doing. And I think that, you know, I, I keep coming back to this fact that like we have we have been trained by society to sort of accept 
the terms that we are given, right? Like we are being, we have been trained to accept that like to create art, you have to exist in like, you know, violent American capitalist structures to be able to do that, right? Like we have been trained to accept this like model of like scarcity that like there can only be like one X, Y, or Z like combination of demographic like artists like telling stories within a given sort of like year or era of like telling stories. And like we've been trained to sort of accept these myths that, you know, are designed to, you know, restrict and control us in ways that like subvert the power that like we hold as like this collective majority. And I think that, you know, so much of what I have been inspired by in the work that I have been doing with other organizations and with other artists has been about like the work that like our communities are doing to deprogram that where we are saying like, we have only been living with these sort of societal constraints of like representative democracy. I'm gonna go like way socialist on this right now. I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> like we have been trained to accept these like constraints of like representative democracy, you know, American capitalism that is like based on like the extraction of like natural resources and like the natural resources of like human bodies in order to create wealth, right? Particularly human bodies of black and indigenous people, right? And so like, you know, if we look at our economy being based on those structures and our industry is a manifestation of those structures as well, where you look at the process of making a film, you know, art and film is a manifestation of values, but very seldom do we have the opportunity as artists to create art where the process is also a manifestation of values, where we're able to say like, we want to be kind to the people that we want to work with. We want the process of making this piece of art to be restorative in the same way that we hope the work of art itself is going to be restorative. And I think that like that, that sounds crazy to talk to like an investor to say like, I want to take more time to shoot this film, you know, because it's, it's good for the people that are like breaking their backs to make this film. Right. And like, that sounds crazy, but like, that is like deeply human, right? <laughs> like to say that I want to take care of my people. And I feel like, you know, there are ways that I'm being so inspired by various communities of artists that are sort of looking at the way that our values have been subverted. And like, you know, when I look at like Asian American communities, indigenous communities, like black communities, where like, you know, all these communities that existed long before like American capitalism, there are these like value structures that are deeply restorative and regenerative that are based around like wealth being determined by like how much you have to give away to your community. And like, this is not the environment that we're living in right now. And I feel like, you know, that is this dynamic of scarcity and abundance that is like obsessing me right now. It's like <laughs> from a place of abundance where we say like, we're claiming our collective power. We're choosing to live our values. We want to create and reform structures that will help us do that. We can think about like the process of making art as praxis, as like values in action. We can think about as artist support organizations like Cam and Sundance, and y'all are doing this. I know you do this every day. Like how are we making decisions about who we support through the lens of redistribution of power, um, creating opportunities for artists to generate wealth for themselves that has been historically and systematically like denied them for generations. And so like all of these things I think are like ways that we can sort of like learn from each other, but also like come together in this way that we are claiming this, this, this space as a collective majority to be able to sort of like topple the balance of power in a way that, you know, I think there's more license than ever to be able to do that right now. So I'm, I'm excited by that. Wow, thank you, Karim. That's that's amazing. Um, we are sadly running out of time. I do have um, one more question for Alice and HP. Um, you know, you are both so creative, and some of my favorite Campfest memories are our audiences watching your fabulous films. And so much you both know that we replay your films all the time at our festival because we want to recreate that magic um, and see that audience really inspired again. So. My question for you too is, you know, where do you find your inspiration for your films, your projects? Um, HP, why don't you start? How do I find inspiration for my films? It's uh, it's interesting because I think um, uh, wh when I first started, like just trying to do some feature work for the independent film scene in general, I think for the most part I wasn't really thinking with an Asian American lens. I was just like, I'm going to write what I know, you know. 
And so, of course, there's this script where, like, the lead character is Filipino, the, you know, the side character is Filipino, we have a bunch of Asians in the script. And I was just, like, writing what I know because I thought that's the only way I can get away with doing it, right? It's like, if I, no one can call me out for being wrong about the life I know. So I just did that, right? And I didn't even, I think I, I was, like, 28 when I did that. And it was a very different time, you know, I think. Um, and then, of course, when we got accepted by the Center for Asian American Media, I was like, well, we're, we're like, like a real movie. This is kind of crazy. <laughs> and I remember at that, at that point just thinking, like, well, what, what this... What does this really mean? And I think what happened was I started like talking to a lot of other people who were coming to see the film, uh, people I didn't even know. And like you know, like at, at the time you, you can just like walk amongst the lines at Cam, like as a filmmaker, like hey, you come to see my movie? Who are you? And just getting to know people. And I think like what happened is like like a, a, after I started learning about like all the different people who were trying to get into the scene as well, and I was thinking about the people I was meeting who were luminaries to me, Alice yourself included, right? Like you were in two thousand four, I was two years after you. Um, I think like all of a sudden I saw a movement, right? All of a sudden I thought to myself, okay, so it's not just so much that I accept my Asianness, you know, it's not about that. It's really just uh, kind of about um, realizing that you yourself can be an active part of that rising tide that lifts all ships. Ships, and I think from that point on, I started taking. Um, uh, feedback from wherever I would go again between 2005 and 2008, just hearing lots and lots of like, oh, your lead character, why are they so gay? Why are your why is your lead character so Asian? And and, and I'll never forget just thinking, thinking like, okay, do do I listen to that feedback and say, okay, well, how do I fit into the America that I think exists, or do I just say, well, I, I I've been an outsider my whole life, why stop now? I'm gonna make a movie that's twice as gay and twice as Asian. And so I'm, I, I I pride myself and in, in, in my collaboration with Center for Asian American Media for making Fruit Fly. Like that, I can't think I can think of no more Yay. Asian film than that. Um, and moving forward, I do think. Um, what inspires me then? And this is not me pooping on myself. I don't even know if I can swear this when I say poop. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I do think that if I think about like my quote unquote canon, whatever the canon is in my respect, uh, I'm really happy with what I have. But now that I see that there's a thirst and a craving for more diversity and inclusion on the big screen and proper representation of voices that are normally not brought to light, I think to myself, now we all have to step up our game. You know, because it's like now, like just being who you are isn't enough. Now your identity, you, you, we are all fighting for our identity, right? We're all fighting for a proper representation of ourselves out there. And now there are lots of people who are up to the task. So everybody get out there and make what you want to make because it'll help if we can get to a place where we don't have to pretend that everything Asian is good. <laughs> Thank you, HB. Alice? Um, yeah, I, I guess I'm very much a, an emotion-based filmmaker. So I really only like I truthfully I'm I'm somebody who just doesn't have to make a film. I was not some I'm not like I'm a filmmaker. What film should I make? I'm more like uh, like both times at both films there's like a question I'm trying to figure out in my life, right? Like when I wrote Saving Face, I was also I was 28 and I was trying to figure out um a lot of things, but one of the things was is it possible to have both love as an Asian lesbian, but also have your family and have both in a way that is somewhat harmonious because it didn't seem possible at that time. So I was really trying to answer that question. And with the half of it, I was trying to, you know, I was personally trying to figure out, you know, as, as a, when I first came out to myself at 19, my first big heartbreak was not actually over a girl, but actually over a guy, like a straight guy who was my best friend. Um, and he really helped me come out. But when he eventually got a girlfriend, uh, his girlfriend had a really hard time with our relationship, even though it was very clear, like there was no traction, there's nothing. But it really always made me wonder, like, well, then what is that? You know, so the half of it is sort of a way for me to explore that. But then by the time I come up with the plot, like it always ends up being totally like none of my stories are factual. Like I didn't grow up in Flushing or Eastern Washington, you know, but emotionally they're very true. I'm trying to explore something. And I guess towards your question, I, I get asked a lot by, like I just recently was asked by a young queer Asian filmmaker, like how do I represent the queer Asian community? And sort of echoes of what HP just said, I, I feel very much like, don't worry about representing the community. Write, your, write the thing you love and you know, because there's many, there are as many queer Asian films and voices out there as there are queer Asian people, right? So the key is you should just do the thing that matters to you and don't worry about like you, you, you know, uh, it's just like for me, I just I know maybe because when I wrote both films both times, I thought no one's ever going to see this. There's a freedom in that. And so I, I, I just really like encourage people to like not worry about whether people are going to think you have no idea what they're going to think. Just write the thing that like where you hear the music and then just see what happens. 
That's so amazing. Um, thank you oh, all thank you. so much. <laughs> um, I know we could go on with this conversation for much longer, but unfortunately we don't have a lot of time. Again, thank you, HP. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Kareem. Thank you guys so much for being available and for being here with us today. Thank you. Hope to thank see you. you sometime soon. Take yes, care. when we all can. I hope we all get to karaoke. Yes. yes. So I, I don't karaoke. I want to watch you karaoke. karaoke. Speaking of yes. karaoke, uh, um, mark your calendars. Camp Fest is coming back May 2021. So karaoke then, hopefully in person. Yes. Also, I have to say, Tamlin Tomita's house looks exactly as I had pictured. I'm so <laughs> excited about that. It's so funny. Like, the whole time, I'm like, this is exactly how I'm right? she lives. So sorry. Anyway, I just wanted to say that. I love that. I'm going to co sign on that <laughs> yeah. one as well. Okay. I, think we have, I think we have to go. Thank you. We're all getting again. cut out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you, everyone. Thanks for okay. joining us. Have a great night. Hi. Oh my God. Oh my God. They're going to make me cry. Um, I'm just so inspired by these young filmmakers, these young storytellers and how, how freaking smart and intelligent and articulate and passionate and truthful because the bottom line they all come to is the importance of telling these stories. And they find out that the more personal you tell these stories, our stories, the more universal they are. It's it's just a part of our human experience. It's, it's not because we're just Americans or Asian Americans or, what, or whatever kind of Americans we are. We're just human beings. And oh my God, just celebrating these storytellers. Thank you so very much, Masashi and Sapano, and bringing in conversation with Alice and HP and Kareem. It's like so inspiring. And again, we learn from them and they learn from us old folks. It's like, it takes patience. It takes it's a long arc towards justice but it's it's a it's a worthy road so thank you so very much and be quiet cat <laughs> oh my gosh there's still so much uh, still so much to do to ensure a much more equitable equal future in media and because of filmmakers like these three these five um our future looks so amazeballs ahead. So thank you again so much. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our last performer for this evening, known for her sharp and witty lyricism and her powerful freaking messages. Filipina American rappers, music producer and spoken word artist, Ruby Ibarra is a, I can't swear, Grace Lee said she, she swears, a force to be reckoned with. Ruby raps in Tagalog, Guaray, and English, and her raps concern her heritage and her experiences as an immigrant to the US from the Philippines. One of Cam's storytellers and performing her inspirational song, A Thousand Cuts, is Ruby Ibarra. Peace, y'all. My name is Ruby Ibarra. And I wanted to congratulate Cam on their 40th anniversary. I also want to say thank you to Cam for the work that they've done and they continue to do in amplifying Asian American voices and stories. Fall, I stand up, break these walls, I rise up Even when I lose it all, I always got my eyes up They praying on my downfall, but I'll never give up A thousand cuts won't be enough to keep my fists in these cuffs And I'm never breaking down when the odds against me Brown gold, gold crown with the gods within me, yeah I was the flower that bloomed in the dark room Flows like monsoons from the womb When I write mood runes and resume my crew to last soon Pray too many moons on my wounds would not bloom Where we from? Death moves so we come through these tunes And hope it sparks light like a night in mid-June My heart's consumed by hate here It's harder when you live fear How can you see clear when you don't see you in the mirror? Uh, I lost too many peers They seem to disappear But they're living through these words that I'm painting here Tell me you'll remember me I'm here to build a legacy I got the ground moving under me A thousand cuts ain't never stopping me I swear I'm never giving up Who I am or why I'm standing up And I ever need no ounce of luck To understand myself cause that's enough Yeah that's enough I can live a thousand cuts I can live a thousand cuts And live a life just covering up uh.
come? What would you die for? What do you live for? When it's resistance, met with an uproar. I'm trying to love more. We've had enough war. Too many stones in our hands and these guns drawn. They try to pressure me. Press me till I stumble down. But not this time. I go zero to a hundred now. They'll never silence me. My voice will be denied. And I'm challenging the system. No, it won't be televised. And I'll never compromise. Cause I'm writing to survive. When the freedom ain't free. And so let's keep the hope alive. Yeah, I see it in me from the glad I do my feelings. From the martyrs to the artists and the writers breaking ceilings. It's life in these lines with lives on front lines. A test of these times will be questioned. These minds and never ever bite my tongue. Uh, that'll be the death. Uh, everything I step or know, it won't be any less. P.S. Tell me you'll remember me. I'm here to build a legacy. I got the ground moving under me. A thousand cuts ain't never stopping me. And that's where I'm never giving up. Who I am or why I'm standing up. And I ain't ever need no ounce of luck To understand myself cause that's enough Yeah that's enough I can live a thousand cuts I can live a thousand cuts Then live a life just covering up And that's where I'm never giving up Who I am or why I'm standing up And I ain't ever need no ounce of luck To understand myself cause that's enough Yeah that's enough I can live a thousand cuts. I can live a thousand cuts. Then live a life just covering up. And that's where I'm never giving up. Who I am or why I'm standing up. And I ain't ever need no ounce of luck. To understand myself cause that's enough. Yeah, that's enough. I can live a thousand cuts. I can live a thousand cuts. Then live a life just covering up. And that's where I'm never giving up Who I am or why I'm standing up And I ain't ever need no ounce of luck To understand myself cause that's enough Yeah that's enough I can live a thousand cuts I can live a thousand cuts Then live a life just covering up If I fall I stand up Break these walls I rise up Either when I lose it all I always got my eyes up They praying on my downfall But I'll never give up A thousand cuts won't be enough To keep my fist in these cuffs If I fall I stand up Break these walls I rise up Even when I lose it all I always got my eyes up They praying on my downfall But I'll never give up A thousand cuts won't be enough To keep my fist in these cuffs Good evening, everyone. I am Dipti Ghosh, and with me is Vincent Pan. We are the board co-chairs for the Center for Asian American Media. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for joining us to celebrate CAMP's 40th anniversary and the power of sharing our stories. Dipti is a longtime CAMP board member, a fun-loving community activist who's been a longtime advocate for Asian American women's rights, and LGBTQ issues. Dipti is also a real cinephile who enjoys great films. Thank you, Vin. And Vin is a great community leader who understands the immense power of story, what it means to express issues that we need to address, and he has a keen sense of moments when we need to stand up and stand together to create a more just society. The love of film is what drew Dipti and I to camp. But together as co-chairs, we have witnessed firsthand the breadth of the amazing work Cam does to demonstrate how stories can invoke, inspire, heal, and ultimately affect communities in meaningful ways. Cam has a special ability to operate at the emotional level of narrative. Cam is also intentional about the work it presents and supports, whether it is through CamFest, public television, or regional and national initiatives that nurture the next generation of makers. It is this next generation that brings us hope for a more just future and more just representation in media. As history and recent events have shown us, when we come together to make change and forge a new movement, profound things can happen. We urge you to come together and join us to support CAM in their efforts to create a more just media landscape and amplify the stories of communities that need to be seen and heard now and into the future. So please consider making a contribution in support of CAM. Donate today at our website and your donation will have double the impact through matching gifts from two anonymous donors.
Thank you again for sharing this evening with us. Take care and be well. Thank you so very much, Vin and Dipti, for your leadership. And again, big thanks to each and every single one of you for celebrating virtually with us all tonight and supporting Cam. I just learned Camely tonight, and I learned from uh, Karim Ahmad the word uh, thrival, so, uh, coming from survival. And uh, that's a wonderful word to to coin and to take ownership of. Um, we all very much enjoyed all, all the performances and hearing from our very, very, very special guests and coming away with a renewed sense of hope for our future. Just another update, uh, we're almost at the $116,000 mark this evening. Thank you so very much for your donations. We're only $9,000 away from our goal of $125,000 for CAM for 2020 fundraising. And um, 2020 has been um, a year of, like it's been said, tremendous challenges. Yes, baby girl. And we've all stayed together as a community of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders and Americans of every creed and color. Ah, actually, I want to just throw it in there because we talk about our white communities, our black communities, our brown communities, our indigenous communities, because our Asian American Pacific Islanders run the spectrum from yellow to brown. How about we call gold? It's like call the color gold or something like that. But in spite of a re unrelenting pandemic and all the other challenges that came here uh, to each and every one of us in 2020 and the attacks on our core democratic principles, we have all bonded together in maintaining our dignity and continuing to, uh, to thrive and tell our stories. Tonight's program is an example of that. It's a testament to that. It's evidentiary of that, of Cam's work. And it reminds us of the vital importance that storytelling plays in reminding us that our community, that our neighborhoods, that our families, our sisters and brothers, our humanity, and our connection to one another makes us thrive. So again, our last uh, plea is that if you haven't, if you haven't already, please consider. It. Remember when you were young. Remember when you didn't have all the resources. Remember when there was not an organization such as CAM um, in telling their stories that meant something to you. Please consider donating to CAM's website at C A A C A A Media dot org slash donate and please rest easy and trust that your contributions every single set will be put to good important and necessary work each and every one of us thank you all the staff members the board of directors at cam all the hard-working persons who are putting together this celebration for each and every one of you we all look forward to seeing you in person at CAM's next virtual event, and hopefully that we can all proceed together and reunite and realign ourselves at CAM Fest May 15th through the 23rd, 2021. To each and every one of you, until then, please be safe, wear a mask, keep socially distanced, um, stay six feet apart, have a happy Thanksgiving weekend. Have a happy Thanksgiving gathering, however you may do it. And to everyone, thank you so very much and good night.